Hi, my name is Lexi. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about the last week and how it went. And the saga continues after my post-vacation weight gain, still trying to get back down. So last week I said that my weigh-in, I was at 180.1. Um, that was being, you know, I was up from vacation originally. Um, my highest after vacation was 185.6. So I did get down to 180.1. Now we are back into the 170s, but just barely. My last Saturday weigh-in was 179.7, which is only 0.4 pounds down. And I wanted to tell you that I know that I was retaining water last Saturday. Um, and the reason that I know this is, you know, as you guys know, I weigh in every day. I've weighed in every day except Sundays. Um, I don't weigh on Sundays, but I've weighed in every day for the last, you know, 10 months that I've been alternate day fasting pretty much other than like when I was on vacation and stuff like that. But so by doing so, I've been able to notice trends and I know what a normal week should look like as far as gains and losses and whatnot. And this was not typical because Thursday, I weighed in at 179.2. Okay, so normally, Thursday, whatever weight I'm at, the next day on Friday after my eat day on Thursday, I would be up between one and two pounds. And then on Saturday, I would be down two to three pounds from that. So that's not what happened this last Thursday. And I actually or I mean Friday, I was up three pounds from my Thursday eat day, which was weird because um, last week I actually didn't eat sugar on Tuesday or Thursday, my weekday eat days. So I should have actually been, um, my weight should have been up a lot less on Friday than usual, but it was actually up a lot more. Um, and I did get back down on Saturday after fasting, but, um, just the whole series, like what I should have been on Saturday was lower than Thursday, but it was actually higher. I hope that makes sense. Basically, Mondays are my highest weight and then it slowly comes down and um, is usually lower on Saturday than the Saturday before, which it was, but it should have. Anyway, it didn't follow the pattern is what I'm trying to say. And the reason is there's two possible reasons. Um, I was on my period, but I was on day four at that point. So that really shouldn't have been affecting it. For me, I usually retain water between like a couple days before my period starts and then like a couple days after. Sometime in that range is when I usually will be retaining water from that. So the most likely culprit was last Wednesday. I had to have a root canal Actually, it was a root canal that I had already had done previously back in 2013. I had to have it redone. I know, super fun. So I've had a unfortunate dental history, partly due to my own mistakes, partly because in high school I had one terrible dentist that really, really over drilled my teeth and kind of because of that, I've lost structure in my teeth and it, you know, I've had repercussions from that for years since, unfortunately. But back in 2013, I had a root canal done on a bottom right molar and um, yeah, so it was fine for a while. Uh, the last year or so, I've kind of noticed, maybe even like a year and a half, that I've had some sensitivity down in my lower um, gums, like near my jaw. And actually, when I had a cleaning done back in last October, the hygienist had noticed that there was like a dark spot around my root where they had done the root canal. And the dentist, this was a different dentist than I've started going to recently he kind of um dismissed it said oh that i don't think that's anything and of course i wanted to believe it because i just wanted to believe there was nothing wrong but i kind of knew that there was something wrong but then so 
fast forward to a couple weeks ago, I had another cleaning and um, the dentist said, yeah, there's something wrong down at the root. There's a dark spot. I think you have an infection in your root canal. So you need to go to an endodontist and have that looked at. So I did, I went to the endodontist and he said, yes, I think you have an infection down there. And so basically down at the root, there was a, a dark spot where there was a hole um, where you know the bacteria was eating into the bone beneath my roots and that's a problem. So I was like, okay, well, I guess we have to fix it. So they redid it. And the funny thing was, you know, they're like, okay, don't eat anything for at least an hour after this. I'm like, well, that's not a problem because I was fasting that day. Um, but it has been a little bit of a recovery. I'm still sore. It's five days later and I'm still feeling sore, unfortunately. So I think that my body had some inflammation from the root canal being done and, um, you know, still coming down from that. But I'm really hopeful for this week as my mouth heals and, um, you know, I don't have my period to deal with or anything. So I should be able to make some progress. I'm really looking forward to some progress this week. So um, I'm also going to eliminate sugar for my weekday eat days again this week. This is what I did last week. And also on Thursday, I am going to do a partial egg fast. So after I do that, I will talk some more about that. But with all of um, this happening with my root canal and eliminating sugar last week for the two weekday eat days, I thought I would talk today about sugar addiction and my experience with it and how alternate day fasting for me has helped. Um, I would definitely call myself a sugar addict, particularly chocolate. Chocolate is my weakness, if I'm being honest. Um, so if, if the, the struggles that I've had with food have been mostly on the, the sweet side. I know a lot of people have different, you know, triggers, like they can eat a whole bag of chips or, you know, they have soda. Soda and chips have never been an issue for me the, the like salty snacks and stuff or the soda, you know, drinks just aren't a problem for me, but chocolate, yes. Especially since I became a mom, like chocolate has been my best friend and my worst enemy, basically. So let me just kind of tell you the experiences that I've had in the past. Okay, so I know that sugar is not good for you. Like we all know that, right? And there's been times in the past where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go sugar-free for a period of time and detox myself and have a fresh start. So it's usually like after, you know, the Christmas holidays when I had gone overboard with treats. Um, so what I would do is I would say, I'm gonna eat all of the treats in the house and then have no temptations. And then I will go without sugar for 30 days. And so what I would do is then I would go and pretty much eat all of the sugar in the house. And I would start out with the good stuff, like the high quality chocolate that I've got like in my Christmas stocking and stuff. And I would eat all of that. And then I would eat like chocolate chips that I had in the pantry, you know, for baking and stuff. And then when that was all gone, I would go to like the stuff that normally I wouldn't even care about, which was like the kids candy, you know, the sugary stuff, which is what I used to like, like in high school, I used to like like Starburst and Skittles and stuff like that. But um, my taste kind of changed over time. Anyway, so yeah, so finally, like all the treats would be gone and I would go cold turkey and have no sugar. And it would be really hard because, you know, basically I was going through withdrawals, you know, and, um, and it would be really hard. I'd have headaches, just super high fatigue and everything like that. Um, but I would do it. I would like white knuckle it and get it done. And towards the end of like the 30 days or whatever, I'd be feeling really good, but I'd also be like anticipating that I could eat treats again soon. 
So then I would, you know, start buying things at the store for when I could eat treats again. And I'd have like the stash building up. And then, so then when I go back to eating them again, like the cycle just started all over again, basically. And it was a vicious cycle. And I remember just like, I would be thinking about the chocolate that I had all the time. Like it would just be on my mind when I was stressed out through the day, like I would just be thinking, okay, I have this and it would just be like calling to me, right? So I would like sneak into the pantry and eat a handful of chocolate chips or, you know, a few pieces of chocolate or whatever it was. And I would do that throughout the day. And so I never considered myself like a binge eater because I guess I wouldn't like sit there with like a whole, I don't know, like a whole pile of things and just be like shoveling and it would just be like throughout the day, over and over, I'd go back to it and just be constantly thinking about it. And now that I know more about what was happening in my body, like I was spiking that insulin constantly and we know that sugar is very addicting. And so it was just kind of like fueling that for me. And um, definitely just a vicious cycle, right? So, and I can say that like when I would get candy, the really good candy for a holiday or whatever, it wouldn't last very long. Um, it would not last very long. I would just eat it right away. So here's what I can tell you. I think that there are three different types of kind of cravings as far as sugar and whatnot. I think there are mental cravings, there are physical cravings, and then there are um, emotional cravings. Okay, I had a video about emotional eating and I think that that's just like, you know, people have different triggers. For me, it's anxiety, like when I'm nervous or anxious or stressed, that's when I tend to go towards emotional eating. The reason that fasting has helped me with that is because on my fasting days, I can't emotionally eat, right? Like I have to process those things um, and get through them in a different way. And so on my eating days, it does help me that I've had that experience on my fasting day where I had to get through an emotion without turning to treats. I'm not saying that I don't do it anymore. It's still something that I have to work through, but I do it a lot less and it has helped a ton. Um, and then with, but with the physical cravings, as far as your body, just like going through withdrawals, the fasting has helped eliminate probably like 80 to 90% of those. I rarely feel like this strong urge in my body to eat treats anymore. So it's more of just a mental thing for me more now than anything. Um, it's that kind of programming, like you deserve a treat. Um, you had dinner, it's time for a treat. Or you're sad, you deserve a treat. You know, like kind of those mental things that you tell yourself. And of course it tastes good. So I always think, yeah, you're right. Like we should do that. Um, and it just, it's like a process of working through all of those messages that you've told yourself for so long that you need to kind of reprogram yourself. And that's, that takes time and it's a process. I'd say that I have improved in those other areas as well, but, um, but I'm still working on it. And for me, it's a choice to, um, to do what's best for my body and to also allow myself to have the treats every now and then. And I know that for some people they're like, sugar is terrible for you. I need to cut it out hundred percent. And if that's you, then I, I applaud you. Like, that's awesome. Um, I've chosen a different path. I don't want to eliminate things completely. I feel like restricting too much kind of backfires for me. And so I'm just trying to like work with it and work with my body and not against it. And also just allow myself to have treats here and there and to not have the emotional charge that I once did. And um, I just have to share with you guys what happened to me. So like two months into fasting, um, I had bought some mint truffles from the store, 
and I bought them and I put them away and then a few weeks later I don't remember how long had passed exactly but I was up in my pantry looking for something and I pulled out this box of truffles and I just stared at it because I totally had forgotten it was there and I just could not believe it. Like I just stood there staring at it for a few minutes. Well, it probably wasn't a few minutes. It was like 30 seconds, but it felt like a while because I couldn't believe that I had forgotten about these things that I had stashed away. And since then that has happened multiple times that I have forgotten about treats that I've put away or whatever, because um, just the fasting has helped me to disconnect from that power that the sugar once had over me and it has been such a blessing that I can't even tell you. Um, this imp the improvement with the relationship with food that I have because of alternate day fasting is incredible. And you know, like I said, I still have to work on it sometimes and uh, work through those mental uh, messages, but it's just so much better. And so um, I wanted to share that with you in case you're struggling with something similar or you're worried because you feel like, you know, on your eating days, you still are binging um, and it, it worries you and it's, it's worrisome, I understand. But I promise you that over time, those things in your body, they just kind of work themselves out and improve. I really believe that they do and that's the way that it works. So um, I hope that that helps you a little bit in some way. And um, as always, let me know how you're doing and I will catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.